Okay, you look for the matching triangle and place it in correctly. Just like that. Hold it down, put the pin back in. Let's put in our RAM. With our RAM in, we can now put in our CPU fan cooler. Here's our mount. So we'll get our mount ready first. And this is our cooler. Switch it to the appropriate mount. So we have 775, 11, 50, and 1366 on 1150. So that's going to be in the middle. So that's where we want it, right in the middle. We'll mount it. So you need just a little dollop. Okay, and on top here we have the air in which the fan flows. We want to pull the air, hot air out and pull it to the back of the PC case. Push it down, get one side on and get the other side on. Perfect. Plug in our CPU fan. Now we can install it into the PC case. But before we put the board on, we need to install our plate. And that will sit in like so. Make sure it all clicks in. Now we can install our motherboard. Okay, make sure that your back panel lines up and line up your screws as well. Now that we have that in, we'll screw all the mounts in. Motherboard securely on. We can install our hard drives, route our cables. So we'll install a uh, M2 drive here. Next, we're going to install one hard drive and another SSD drive. So they give you these screws. Now I had to figure this out because I didn't have a user manual. Figured out the best way to do this was like this. So you screw these on the front two points of where your plugs go in like so. They have these slots in here. One and two. You would install it like so. Push it on in and slide it on in. After you do that, when you look inside here, you'll see that these screws do line up with the holes. So that's where you screw them in. You grab two screws. One more at the back. There you go, nice and tight. Now we're going to also install another SSD drive. You could always install it this way like so, but I figured doing it the other way is better. That way the cable's not in the way when you're trying to close the case. So there's three you can install. One, two, and three. Hold that in place as we get our screw in, our first screw in. Just start the thread off and there we go. It's easier to do it once you have one screw in, okay? Because you have it mounted in place. All we have to do is push it, flush up, and we'll put in our next screw. From this side here, make sure your other screws line up as well, the other screw holes, and we'll screw it down. We have it mounted, and you can see the other two screw holes just here. Put in the other two screws and uh, that's pretty much our hard drives installed, ready to go. The other mounting spot is just above here. I'm gonna show you that you can also mount it up here if you wanted. Okay. And that is the top one mounted. 
then you just put in your two screws in there. Get a short screwdriver for this one because it's really hard to get it in if you have a long screwdriver. Good. And we'll put that screw in. Now with our hard drive installed, power installed, motherboard installed, let's now route our cables and we'll install our graphics card last. The good thing about this power supply is that they already give you a VDG cable or a 5 volt 3 pin as well. So that's a really good bonus. So if you have any type of RGBs, you can use the power directly from this power supply. I haven't seen a power supply that does that yet, but at the same time, it's not a big deal because usually it would plug into the motherboard. Let's plug it all in and make sure that it works. So let's get our CPU plugged in. This is for the graphics card, so that will go in there. This is good because it is ready for SLI. It already has two graphics card power cables, both eight pins, but they also split to six pins. So you can do two six pin, a six pin, an eight pin, or two eight pins. We have our ATX. That's going to be somewhere up the top here. So we'll plug that in there. Let's plug everything in first. The ATX right here, let's plug that in. We can also route all our front panel cables as well and our power cables. So we'll tuck them all in the top corner right here. We'll push all the cables out there and then we will route them where they need to go. The USB 3.0, so we'll push that on through. Pull them all through now. Our USB and our HD audio. Having trouble, so I'm just going to use a long nose plier. Just get it in place and now we can just plug it in. Okay. And just tuck in these cables underneath the CPU fan cooler, that way it's hidden. As you can see, now it's all tucked in, nicely put away. A lot more hidden now, you can't really see the cables for the fan and also the fans for the CPU fan. And now we can work on pulling our graphics card cable through just so we can dangle here when we go to plug in our graphics card. And also we're going to plug in our network card. Here we have our network card. It's a Bluetooth network card, two in one. Our graphics card will plug in the first time 16 slot and that's going to take up two slots so we need to take out two of these you push on it get it out bend it back and forth until it breaks okay we'll check our graphics card so when we go to plug this in we're going to need these two here so then our network card can simply plug into the top one okay so we need to remove this first this will allow our graphics card to sit in move it out of the way and put in our graphics card then we'll lock it in you hear a little click then, that locks in our graphics card. And we also put in our screw that holds the graphics card in place. Let's try our network card into the times one slot. Plug it in. We have Wi-Fi, we have our graphics card. We also need to route this down. So, so to do that, we'll take out our graphics card first. We will pull it down this way. That way it's nicely hidden. We'll put our graphics card back in. Usually when you push in the graphics card, it automatically locks in. But for this type, you have to do it manually. So this slides left and right. So you just slide it left to lock it in. And when you want to take it out, you slide it right. Plug everything in. We know our USB 3.0 is about here. So we'll come in through here. These are our front panel cables. Push them into the appropriate slots that takes it closest to the plug-in point. It is here, so we need to go into the third slot at the bottom here. Now they're all in. We need to put in the other, another USB and another HD audio. We know our HD audio is in this point, so we'll just push it in here. Our USB is also closer to this side, so we'll just push all that in through. Let's have a look at the book and see where everything plugs into. Now they already show you on there, but it's a little bit small. So I just want to show you guys on here. Starting from left to right, we have the power LEDs up the top, positive and then negative. Then we have the power button, which is negative on the outside because it has ground there. And then from the left, we have HDD LED, then we have the reset switch. Pushing our USB 3.0. And now we'll plug in our other USB for the front panel. So we'll plug that in here. Plug in our HD audio as well. So we'll pull it all back now from the other side. Now we can figure out how we're going to route the rest of the cables and give everything power as well. We also have our SATA cables for that. This will come up the top here and plug into our SATA right there. 
and seeing as this is here we can also plug in a Molex as well that will plug in to this Molex here we have two more Molexes and another power cable here plug in one more right here so we'll just plug them in like that zip tie it all down so that it's all hidden we'll bunch these up together again we have another power cable here in case we want to plug something else later but for now it's not being used so what we can do is just tuck it in here ready for the next power source just bundle these all together and just tuck them back in here because they are not in use put a zip tie around it and as for the rest we're going to run it all along here like this okay we're going to push that all along there make that very neat and we're going to run all these cables together keep them all together now and hidden all behind we're going to try and keep it behind the panel that way you don't see it all as well let's just make sure everything plugs in now we'll run our SATA cables and we are done okay so here are the SATA cables that came with it we have two black ones in here so we'll use them like this we'll put in the bottom one like so we'll then push it on through here and we'll come out the top and plug it into the SATA drive. As for this one here, we're going to also plug it next to it. We will tuck it underneath and go to our other hard drive. This is going to go into our hard drive. Perfect. Uh, so it seems that we need to go the other way for this one. So we have to take the straight cable on the other side and put the right angle cable on this side. So we'll push the right angle cable in here, like so. Okay, good. Before we finish off, let's give everything a test run, make sure it all works. Let's turn it on. There we go. Seems like everything is working. We do have the button up the top here that can allow us to change the LEDs. As you can see. And we have one for the power supply as well, in case we just want it as one color. The CPU fan isn't working, so we need to plug that in properly. Now that it is working, everything works as it should. That is our build completely put together, guys. A really easy, really simple build. Our graphics card's working. Very clean, very good setup. And we're just gonna plug in the Wi-Fi antennas, connect to the Wi-Fi network, make sure everything works. Bluetooth, everything. We want everything to work. Wi-Fi antennas in, grab our HDMI cable, Plug it in. Right, so now we'll turn it back on and we'll mash delete and boot it from the appropriate drive that has Windows and see how everything works. When you use an M2 drive, it also means that a certain SATA drive isn't going to work. So you need to make sure that you're using the appropriate SATA drives that will allow you to boot. This one works here, so we'll plug that in there. See if it reads it now. Alright, so now we'll turn it back on and we'll mash delete and boot it from the appropriate drive that has Windows and see how everything works. And there we go. Just uh, check everything. So we are on the Z170 Extreme 3, P7.30, processor speed 4.2, all cores on 42. We want boost technology on, very good. We've got fast boot on. Alright, so we know everything else is working at the moment. Alright, so we're just going to boot it right now. I had Windows previously installed on the 500GB SSD. So we're going to boot it from that and uh, hopefully it all works. Okay, let's just see if this automatic repair works. It should. I don't see why Windows wouldn't be working. Okay, and there you go guys. PC built, ready to go. And that is the built-in at the moment. As you can see, it all works as it should. Very happy with the build. I think it looks really nice. Let's just plug in a couple of things. USB, keyboard, and uh, let's have a look at some of this stuff. And let's open up Specky and also CPU to see what we have running. So we have Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, we have the Intel Core i7 6700K at 4GHz, 
16 gigabyte dual memory at 15 99 megahertz each channel is 1600 times by 2 equals 3200 motherboard as rock z170 extreme 3 4095 megabyte nvidia geforce gtx 1050 ti zotac international storage we have the 8 terabyte hard drive we have the 500 gigabyte wd and we also have the 1 terabyte wd as well so that is everything we installed, everything looks really good, everything works really well and uh, that brings us to the end of the build so um, I'm really happy with the way everything turned out I think it looks really nice very simple and oldie but still a goodie so you know let me know what you think guys this time I did not want to go too much with the LEDs like my personal PC um, I know everyone isn't into LEDs, so I decided to um, bring it down a little bit and uh, not add too many LEDs this time. And I love the way the power source has its own LED panel, so you can switch the colors to whatever you want.